Welcome to In The Meadows with me, Hiva Kuzikar. Today we got a Queen Jubilee special podcast. And today, Mr. Johnson, one of our own teachers here at Judge Meadow Community College, will be interviewing, will be into, I'll be interviewing him. So, Mr. Johnson, introduce yourself. Good morning. Uh, I'm, my name is Mr. Johnson. I'm the head of history at Judge Meadow Community College. And I've been here for 21 years and I volunteered. So, sir, can you explain to everybody what we're going to be talking about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about the, the uh, Platinum Jubilee for Queen Elizabeth II, which has been organised for next week. And a Platinum Jubilee is the 70th anniversary of the Queen coming to the throne. And it's been seen by lots of people as a very, very big event and an opportunity to have lots of parties and celebrate. So, sir, shall we get into the questions? Fire away. Okay. So, how do people celebrate this day now? What do we do that's so special about this Queen Jubilee? Well, having looked at some of the things that the the authorities have been planning, we've got the same things with most jubilees. So, uh, you will have street parties. Um, there'll be parades. There's a special service uh, in London. Uh, there's a special concert in London. Lots and lots of bunting. So you will see little flags everywhere. Lots of flags. More flags. Fly pasts in London with uh, uh, Royal Air Force planes. I would assume some Second World War planes as well as some modern ones. Gun salutes, which means they fire blanks to make a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, loads and loads of things. Oh, and beacons as well. They're going to light 1,500 beacons across the country as a celebration. So beacons just make big, big fire. And then as soon as one's lit, you see it, you light yours, and then it sends a signal around the coast. It's quite That's neat. crazy. Yeah. So why is this so important to many people, like obviously, especially English people? Well, you've got two two themes effectively one because it's Queen Elizabeth II and lots of people like her and also because of the length of time so this is a platinum jubilee no monarch in England has ever or Britain has ever made it to 70 years before so this is a, a special thing so the Queen's 96 and the fact that she's lasted that long and been on the throne for so long is hugely significant for people so I'm 48 she's been the Queen since I was born and my parents are in their 70s and they can barely remember a time before the Queen either. So it's that sort of longevity. She's been around for so long that people are just used to it. And people in people in Britain tend to be what we call small C conservative. We don't like change. And the, and the Queen is something that's consistent through that time. That's, that's really crazy because obviously we've had so many monarchs go through England. And to think she's lasted the longest, yeah. that's amazing. So, um, why does the what does the Queen do to celebrate this day? Well, the Queen, her participation this time is going to be quite limited, apparently, because obviously she's ninety six. She's got mobility issues, so she's picking and choosing. So they they haven't actually said what things she'll be attending yet. Highly likely she'll attend Troop in the Colour, which is basically a parade, a place called Horse Guards Parade in the centre of London. And you have lots of military military people on horses or riding past, and she sits on a horse and waves at them. She'll probably attend that. All of the other things, it's um, basically as and when, if she feels like it, how she feels, because 96 is knocking on a bit. Yeah, I, I can imagine that, though, like, it's a big number to, like, obviously, like, she's really old as well. So we have to consider that, but obviously so much is going to happen on that day. Yeah. Let's hope for the best. Well, it, for a lot of people, it's it's more a case of what they can do to celebrate, because obviously most people won't go to London, but... Even driving into work now, you can start to see in a lot of uh, the centres of villages, you've got lots of bunting going up, lights. I've got I've had flyers through for my village with a, a jubilee party celebration uh, uh, on the, the, the village green in the centre of the village. So lots of people are sort of buying into this and getting quite excited about the opportunity to have a party or tea party. And even if they're not necessarily massive fans of the Queen or the monarchy, it's an opportunity to celebrate. So people like that. Everyone likes a celebration once in a while. They do. So, so um, like, is Leicester doing anything to celebrate the Queen Jubilee? Like, so far, have you seen anything? Uh, not, I don't live in Leicester anymore, so I don't get the um, I don't get the same sort of information that that other people will because I live outside Leicester. I would assume, and I'm, I'm guessing here that there'll be the, the same sort of things you get everywhere else with lots of bunting celebrations, possibly a service in the in the cathedral. But I am guessing on that one. I, I'm sure they would do something. It is a really big like event. So, like, how does the public gain something from this day? Because obviously, the Queen is getting a whole day after her. 
because obviously she's made an achievement. But so like, what do the public gain? Because obviously we're all a community and everyone wants something once in a while. So what do we gain? Well, the, the big thing is it's an opportunity for a party. Mm. So I, I know, I do know a lot of old, older people are quite excited about the opportunity because they talk about the, the Silver Jubilee in 1977, which was a 25th anniversary on the throne. And if you see photographs of the, the, the Silver Jubilee, there were street parties, so whole, whole streets blocked off, big trestle tables down the centre, bunting everywhere, the whole community eating together, enjoying themselves. And particularly after, obviously, two years of COVID and isolation, it's an opportunity for some people to come out and celebrate with, the, with their neighbours and family and friends for the first time. So it's a big thing. Um, for some people, the biggest thing will be the bank holidays. So traditionally, we have a, a, a May bank holiday where we have, it would have been next Monday, and that's been moved to Thursday. There's a new bank holiday created just for this year, the following Friday. So effectively, we've got a four-day weekend. So for people that work full-time, the idea of four days off is fantastic. Not everybody's going to get it. And obviously, we're on half term, so we got a, we got a week in October, uh, a week, a day in October where we were off. But that's it. For other people, the pubs are open longer. Mm. So the pubs are open till one o'clock in the morning, which is quite late on, uh, I think, Thursday, Friday and Saturday night. So there's there's that. Lots of people just like the, the flags. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, tea parties. So people will be baking for it. It's an opportunity to just get out the streets and share things with people, I think. Are you going to do anything this year for Lupin Jubilee, like bake or something just small? Yeah, I have been roped into uh, baking some Victoria sponges. Really? Or at least assisting with the baking of Victoria sponges next weekend. Yes. So we need to dry some, we have to bring them in. Yeah. So we, I, I live in a little little cul-de-sac and we, we had a street party for VE Day a couple of years ago. So that was in the middle of COVID. It was the first opportunity we'd had to actually come out of the, our houses for about three months. So there will be a, a small gathering in our in our close with people waving the odd little flag and eating and then drinking and then going home. So yes, I will be doing something. I will be participating. See, like everybody else can also participate. That that's other things about this year. Like we all want to be included in something, right? Yeah. And like celebrating is such a nice thing to do, even if it's just a little celebration with your family, friends, neighbours, anything. Absolutely. So, um, is there any history behind the Queen Jubilee? Like major, major history. Yeah, there's there's an awful lot, but you'll you'll find if you actually looking at the, the royal family and the celebrations, a lot of it is invented in the 20th century. So a lot of things that we think of as really traditional, they weren't done 400, 500 years ago. And partly because a lot of monarchs didn't live that long. So the, the first acknowledged as the first sort of modern jubilee was about 200 years ago. It's got a king called George III. And he celebrated his golden jubilee, which is 50 years. So it was 1809. So exactly the same sort of things that have been happening next week. There was a, there were parades. There was a military gun salute. There was a service at Westminster Cathedral. Uh, no, Westminster Abbey, not Cathedral. Um, same sorts of things. And then you've got a tradition that sort of followed that. So Queen Victoria, because she lasted quite a long time. She was on the throne for sixty three years. So she had a diamond jubilee in eighteen ninety seven. And again, same sorts of things: parades, gun salutes, people getting excited, lots of flags. So the, the whole idea of celebrating a jubilee has become more important over the last 150 years. So the first silver jubilee that was celebrated was George V, which is the Queen's granddad in 1935, off the top of my head without looking at my notes. And and obviously then in 1977, there's a big thing about the Queen being on the throne for 25 years. So it's become something more important. But the two most recent, I can barely remember them. So there was 2002 and 2012, there was the golden and then the diamond jubilee. And I've seen pictures on the internet, but I don't remember any big celebrations. I don't don't recall unless I wasn't paying attention. Maybe you were. Maybe you were busy. Maybe anything could have happened. Yeah. But it was a long time ago, so I doubt everyone remembers. It's only ten years, but yeah, okay. Still long. <laughs> so what are what are some special things that we do on this day? Like as schools, um, offices, at workplaces, professions. What do they do? Well, most people will be either choosing to participate in the things that are being organised locally and things organised nationally. A lot of people watch it on the TV and it won't go an awful lot further than that. So my parents uh, getting on a bit, they probably won't be going out anywhere, but I imagine my mum will be glued to the TV. Me dad will be beaming with pride because there's lots of flags because they do like flags, my parents. Um, in terms of work, I, I don't recall the school doing anything particularly special for the last couple of jubilees. Um, 
flags will be going up, I'd imagine. But I'm not in charge of uh, so social events in the school, so we'll have to see. And obviously, because the, the actual um, bank holidays and the arrangements are next week, it's either tomorrow or we've missed it. So it's not really convenient for schools. Is it like very famous around like UK and just other countries as well? Is it very very famous, or would you say it's like a like a very like it's a celebration that is big, but not a many people know about it? Well, I think they're making a big deal of it this time because of it, it's the Platinum Jubilee. So if you watch the news, they they started to mention it quite a lot. Uh, in newspapers, you're starting to see things. As I said, lots of local councils have been expected to put on events. There are flyers going out to people's houses. Beyond the UK, um, a lot of a lot of foreign tourists come to Britain to see the royal family or to see at least see their palaces. So it's not going to be a big thing anywhere else in the world, apart from parts of the, the Commonwealth where they might be having the same sort of celebrations. But yeah, it is quite a big thing. But it depends on your your point of point of view in terms of the royal family as well. Because not everybody likes the royal family, and not everybody likes the idea of of a monarchy, so it'd be interesting. Because obviously, the Queen being ninety six, she's not going to be around forever. So there'll be a debate at some point when she eventually passes on about do we continue with all this. So I know a lot of people that like the Queen, very very happy that the the Queen's got to ninety six, and we're quite will be quite disappointed, upset, even devastated when the Queen dies. But whether they have that affection for the for the royal family as a as a sort of institution, and whether they'll like the the, the king, and when Prince Charles becomes the king, is a big debate. So that's why I think a lot of people are making a big deal of it this time because it's the last, possibly the last opportunity to sort of celebrate someone who's been around for a very long time. She was sixteen years old, well, six years old, six years in the first Second World War, but she was around during the Second World War. She's been around through the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, all the way into the twenty first century. So when that when she passes on, that will be a sort of full stop on an entire era, sort of like the end of the twentieth century, twenty years into the twenty first. Yeah, she has been for she has been around for a very long time, and even for people who like don't like the royal family as much, I think it still will hurt them a bit about like the queen dying and then passing on and whatever happens because she's been such a big part, and I think she's done a lot for our country. So far, what I've learned, she's done a lot. So. I think it will be a very, very, very sad moment for the UK. Yeah, so it's an opportunity to celebrate now while she's still yeah. there. You can, you can enjoy it. So, do the royal family, like like all her sons, grandsons, do they do anything to celebrate this day? <laughs> Quite a few of the royal family will be involved. Um, it's more a case of who isn't going to be involved that, that's quite notable. So, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, so Harry and Meghan, will not be involved in any of the official events. And Prince Andrew, her second son, also is not participating because there's been a bit of a scandal. Do you know what the scandal was? I, I do know what the scandal was. You might, you might have to look that up in the news. Um, look it up on the internet, yes. Probably not, probably not the time to discuss the scandal he's been involved in right now, but it involves some money. Hmm. That, that's something we can do our research at home about. So, so, is there any other interesting facts you have for us today about the Queen, oh. about the Queen, about anything? There's loads of stuff. I, I did spend a little bit of time trying to find some interesting facts about the Queen. And some of them most people will know, so the idea that she doesn't have a passport or a driving licence. Because when you get a passport, if you look at it, it's actually issued in her name. So you're, you're, you're there, you're using that passport because she's technically allowed you to do so, so she doesn't need, need one. Well, it's mentioned to you earlier she's got two birthdays which is which is greedy so she's got a, a, a actual birthday 21st of april she's got an official birthday in june as i said where the weather's better and they can take part in the celebrations i'd love to have that love more, it. more presents but apparently the royal family don't give out big presents they tend to give out jokey presents or sort of comedy ones at christmas and uh, their birthdays the I think that's good because like you always get so many, they always get so many presents, luxurious things. They basically have everything, and I hear like a joke here and now. It was really nice because we like to do those families as well. Like jokes sometimes are nice as well. I did hear something the other day that somebody was interviewing the uh, God, what, Duchess of Cornwall, and she said uh, they were looking around the house and they were picking things up. Uh, this little kid was looking around. Somebody was meeting her and. The kid looked at the bottom of the, this item, I don't know, a mug or something, and it said uh, donated by a particular country. And she says, well, yeah, we, we get donated everything. There's loads of things, but the house is only full of the stuff we like. If you go into the garden, you'll find all these donations that other people have made, and the stuff we don't like, we just put in the bushes somewhere. So they get a lot of stuff given to them. 
which I thought was interesting. Um, the best bit I thought, she doesn't have an official surname. Really? So the, we call them the House of Windsor because it's just a way of, it's it's neat and tidy. In terms of historical events, we like we like eras, so we like the Tudors and the Stuarts. But her official surname, according to this, is Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, and her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, which wouldn't fit on Sims. <laughs> Yeah, that's a very long name, and um, I didn't hear a surname in that, but I'm going to just go with the flow of that one. And apparently she's worn the same nail polish since 1989. Same nail? Yeah, I don't think the actual so, because it'd be chipped by now, but apparently she wears Elsie's, no, Essie's Classic Pale Pink Shade Ballet Slippers, which cost £7.99, so it's um, not even expensive. That is very, very detailed. And do you know what her favourite breakfast cereal is? Uh, can I guess? You can, you won't get it, but... Cocoa Pops. <laughs> I wish it was. No, Special K, apparently. She likes Special K. But she doesn't like the boxes on the table, so she has plastic Tupperware instead. And I'm sure someone pours the milk for her. That's very organised. It is. Do we know anything else about the Queen? Uh, oh, the, uh, yeah, this is genius. So, she carries a handbag all the time. And there'll obviously be lots of security staff around her as well. So if she if she's got a handbag in her right hand and she's talking to someone and she's a bit bored, she switches the handbag to the left hand, at which point someone says, the Queen's bored, security step in and take that person away so she doesn't have to deal with the end of the conversation. That, if that was how real life would work, no one would have conversations. I know, I think that's genius. I'm trying that in class. I hope you don't get bored of us. Yeah. But is there anything else that you want to talk about today, like on, on this podcast, about the Jubilee, about the Queen, anything? Well, as I said, said all the way through, uh, people have got different opinions about the, the royal family. People have different opinions about the Queen. They'll have different opinions about whether, whether the UK becomes a republic at some stage, so a country without a head of state. But it's just an opportunity next week to enjoy yourself, meet a few people. Enjoy it. If we then start debating the cost of it, it's going to cost a lot. I've read estimates; it's going to cost a billion pounds for some of the things that they're staging. And obviously, you can then have a debate about whether that money could be better spent elsewhere. But I've also looked looked into it, and a lot of businesses are saying it'll it'll be a massive boost to the local economy in places because people will buy things, they'll buy souvenirs, and the pubs being open longer, lots of people will stay there longer. So it's it's an opportunity, and if you don't want to participate. You don't have to participate. Yeah, it's not a must. Like it's everybody's own opinion. So, but I think that was a really good show. I really learned a lot from today. Um, so, thank you guys for listening to our podcast. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for coming on. Thank you for talking about the Queen Jubilee and the Queen everything. We learned a lot. I think everybody learned a lot. I did not know she has the same nail polish. Still shocked about that. But yeah, that's a that was a very good show, sir. Jazak, thank you for coming on. No, it's been a it's been a pleasure and thank you for interviewing me. No worries, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>